Thanks. Hi, my name is uh, Łukasz Konkol, and I will speak about uh, performance optimization and profiling. Uh, as an example, uh, I will use uh, comparison of uh, Pythonic code and patterns uh, inherited from other languages uh, like C, C++, uh, Java. Uh, yeah, I will try. Uh, okay, let me introduce myself a bit. Uh, I'm working as a senior Python developer at STX Next. Uh, it's a Python software house uh, located in Poland. Uh, I have also gave my talks uh, at uh, PyCon UK last year and uh, PySS, uh, which is a Python conference uh, in San Sebastian in Spain. Uh, and I have also uh, shared my knowledge uh, during uh, uh, local meetups uh, in, in Poznań in Poland. But what's most relevant uh, for the topic, uh, I'm really interested in uh, performance optimizations uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really fascinated uh, in it. Okay, let's check up the, the agenda. Uh, I will first uh, introduce you shortly uh, to the topic of, uh, of the performance aspects. Uh, uh, then uh, we would have a live demo. And then I will summarize the a talk shortly. And at the end, uh, we would have some time for questions. Uh, but before we get started, uh, let me get to know you a, a little bit better. Uh, who have ever used uh, any profiling tool? OK. Uh, uh, who is using that uh, frequently, like uh, on daily basis in, in daily uh, job? Okay, not that much. <laughs> uh, and who is just uh, starting a journey in Python? Okay. Uh, and who has used uh, any other languages uh, than, than Python, like C, C++, Java? Oh, okay, that's much. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, what uh, are the base aspects uh, of performance? Uh, first of all, it's uh, CPU. Uh, we all want our code uh, to be as fast as possible. Uh, that's what uh, our client and our end user uh, most cares about. Uh, Google Statistics says that, uh, then, that more than the half uh, of the users will abandon the website uh, if it takes more than three seconds to load. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, each single second uh, calls uh, sa customer satisfaction to drop uh, by about 15% uh, and conversion uh, to drop by uh, around uh, 5 to 10%. Another thing is uh, memory. Uh, the truth is uh, that uh, we don't care about the memory until we run out of it. And uh, I must admit it's fair approach, because why should we care about something that uh, it's not affecting us. But uh, we should be still uh, aware that uh, any memory leak uh, can affect our software. Uh, for example, in, uh, on a daily basis in uh, testing environments, we don't use as much fixtures as uh, we would have in production. So the scale uh, makes a really difference here. Uh, last factor is uh, input-output op operations. Uh, and, uh, for example, uh, database operations or file system, uh, this may massively influence the uh, first aspect, so, uh, the, uh, so the time of, of uh, loading an application or running, uh, but it also has another side effects. Uh, there are specific limit limitations or s on the simultaneous uh, input-output uh, operations. Uh, for example, database has transactions uh, which may uh, log uh, and hold each other. Uh, file system has uh, limits on uh, number of open of, of simultaneously open files. Uh, moreover, some services like uh, Google App Engine uh, provides resources like database uh, up to certain quota. Uh, then each uh, read and write to database over that limit uh, costs you real money. Uh, what should we do to optimize our code uh, in a good way? First, we have to plan and predict our approach. Uh, implementation and the data structure which we will use. 
uh, and uh, predict which, uh, which one will give us the best results. Uh, then we should profile our code. Uh, it would be good to provide a few proofs of, con of concepts. Uh, of course, if, you, if we can, uh, we should use uh, some fake data just to indicate which one uh, would be the best. But that's not all. Uh, once we ship our code, uh, we should monitor the performance uh, in the living ecosystem. Uh, keep in mind uh, uh, that you will not be able to test each data set. Uh, you can be almost sure that your end user uh, will have some edge case uh, you could uh, not invent on your, on your testing uh, environment. Uh, and note that this may be also related to the uh, tech stack uh, the user is, uh, is uh, using. Uh, once you have production benchmarks collected, uh, you should identify uh, bottlenecks and quick wins. Uh, and it really depends on each specific case. Uh, you should then take a look into optimizing your code again. Uh, you should uh, first uh, look uh, into quick wins and bottlenecks. Uh, but should we optimize everything? Of course not. There is no point in uh, optimizing uh, something that, that uh, will give you like 5% uh, gain uh, and it will cost you a few weeks or even months uh, of work. Uh, so, about profiling tools, there are a lot of them available in uh, PyP. Uh, I will just introduce a few of them, which I will use uh, during the demo. Uh, first one is uh, C-Profile. Uh, it's uh, to inspect uh, the CPU usage, uh, divided by functions. Uh, that's part of uh, standard library, uh, and uh, it's uh, most accurate of the available tools. Next one is uh, Memory Profiler, uh, that's a third party library. Uh, it's available on PyP. Uh, it's uh, better than other options, uh, but it's still not perfect. Uh, results may vary a bit, which uh, I will present you later during the, the demo, uh, and it also takes some time to, to profile the memory. Next one is uh, Sys. It's built-in library. Uh, it provides, a, provides us with uh, a low-level operating system API, which we can use to, uh, to inspect, uh, for example, uh, CPU usage of the process or, or the memory. And last tool is this. Uh, it's also built-in library. Uh, we can use it to disassemble the Python code uh, and uh, inspect it uh, on lower level. Okay, so now it's time for demo. Is the font size, font size okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the first example. Uh, first, I will show you the usage of uh, of the tools uh, I I will uh, I will use during the presentation. Uh, so. Uh, First one uh, is the function which uh, I will use to prof uh, profile the uh, CPU usage. Uh, so I'm creating the list. Uh, I'm creating the second list. And then I'm deleting the first list and returning the uh, second list. Okay, and how do we profile it? Uh, we, can, we should import the C profile. Uh, <clears throat> then import uh, the function uh, which we will use and provide it as a string. 
<coughs> so it can get uh, evaluated. So uh, we can see that uh, six functions has been called during, during the execution of uh, the main function. Uh, it took uh, 0.02 seconds. Uh, and we got number of calls of each function. Uh, here in the last column, we have uh, the file name, line number, and the function name. Uh, yeah, we got the number of, of calls of, this, of that function. We have total time of uh, all the calls. Uh, then we got time per one single call, average time. Uh, then we got uh, cumulative time, uh, which is uh, from the start up to the end of this function. Yeah, and uh, cumulative time uh, per call. Okay. Uh, we can also pass some additional arguments to C profile. Uh, but uh, I will not do that for now. Uh, I just want to show you the simple cases of, uh, of uh, CPU profiling. Okay. Uh, another, uh, another tool which we can use uh, for profiling CPU is uh, TimeIt. Uh, but uh, it's not so accurate as uh, CProfile, uh, mostly because of uh, a garbage collector not being run in... Uh, time it. So let's run the second example. <clears throat> okay, we got uh, one second, uh, uh, one point eighty five seconds. Uh, it's uh, the uh, the time of running the one hundred retries on this example. So what we provide here is the real function to, to measure, measure and the setup string, which also will be evaluated before uh, running the, uh, the real function to, to profile. Uh, time it is also available uh, with uh, the dash m time it. Uh, then we should provide the setup string. And then the string with the real function to profile. Uh, this will give us uh, a bit more readable uh, <coughs> result. So we got the information that we have run uh, 100 loops. Uh, best of three of, the, of these loops is 18.5 uh, milliseconds. Uh, and we have also nice plugin for, for time it in uh, IPython. Uh, we should just import import the function. And then we use percent sign, time it, CPU profile. And here we will have even more uh, user-friendly uh, way uh, of, of, sh of showing the results. Uh, we will also have the standard deviation. Yeah, so we got average time here, and then the standard deviation here. It has been run in uh, 100 loops, and uh, it has been run seven times. Okay, so that's about uh, the 
performance, uh, CPU performance. And uh, now let's go to the memory profiling. So uh, on the function, uh, we need to profile, uh, we should call the uh, decorator. Uh, we get, we got, uh, uh, we, should, we should import memory profiler first, uh, then uh, use the profile uh, decorator from this library. Uh, and we have a few optional parameters like precision, Yeah, that takes uh, a bit longer. Uh, it uh, probes the uh, memory uh, usage of the process uh, after each line. So here we got the uh, code we're profiling. Uh, we got the starting uh, uh, memory usage. And we got increment and the total memory usage here. So here we can see that uh, uh, first list took uh, about 1.85 megabytes, second one took 1 1.87 megabytes, and then when we release actually the list A, we get back one megabyte of memory. Uh, what that may mean? Uh, that uh, we got, uh, garbage collector didn't run yet, or there is one more thing, uh, some uh, small integers are being cached uh, by, by Python. So these are just few of, uh, of the reasons, but there are definitely more. Uh, and moreover, there is, uh, uh, we should also, also keep in mind that it's just uh, probing, so it might not be 100% uh, accurate. Uh, accurate. Okay, uh, another example will be greatest common divider. Uh, so we will disassemble it and see uh, what uh, the result will be. Okay, uh, all these uh, codes are listed in uh, documentation of uh, this library. Uh, so we got here the, uh, we're setting up the loop. Uh, we're loading the y variable. Uh, then if uh, y is false, we will jump to line 24, so over here. Uh, okay, in next line, uh, we're loading X and Y, we're calling a binary modulo function, then we store it in temp variable. Next line is assignment of uh, Y to X, so we're loading, uh, loading Y and storing it in X. Next line is assignment of temp to Y, uh, we're loading temp and storing uh, y and we got the end of the loop, so we're jumping back to the second second line over here, and then we're loading x and returning it. So that's uh, the simple example of uh, disassembled uh, Python code. Uh, we'll also use it uh, later for uh, more interesting examples. Okay, another thing is uh, what, uh, what uh, another thing I, I want to talk about is uh, the reliability of, of profiling. So we will call um, both CPU profiling and memory profiling uh, three times and see the results.
Yeah, note that uh, we got three different times. Uh, keep in mind that it uh, might depend on many factors uh, like uh, and other processes uh, uh, being run in the background. Uh, I, tried, I tried to isolate that uh, virtual machine uh, as much as I could, uh, but uh, 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 but uh, it still differs uh, uh, between the calls. About the memory, uh, we also got different results here. Uh, first, uh, first reason behind it is, as I said before, uh, Python caching. Uh, and it's uh, mostly visible in uh, difference between first call and uh, the other tools. So here we got different result, and here we got the same result at the end. The increment still differs, but uh, it's because of uh, caching uh, uh, in Python. Okay, uh, another f uh, example. is uh, creating lists by list comprehension, by appending the result, and by extending the list. So definitely the fastest is uh, list comprehension. Then four times slower is uh, uh, creating list by appending uh, each uh, subsequent item, and a bit faster uh, is extending the list. So uh, whether uh, you would have the possibility to extend, use it, because it's a small gain, but in the scale it can really differ. Next example uh, is a comparison of uh, data types. Uh, tuples, lists, sets, and uh, dictionaries. So the fastest uh, is the list. Then we got sets. Uh, tuple is much slower than, than uh, uh, list and set. And dictionary is uh, even more slower is the slowest of, of, of these collections, but we should keep in mind that dictionaries are uh, keys and values pairs, so uh, the construction of it takes time. Moreover, there is a hashing function uh, uh, which uh, is hashing the keys, and we can see also the size of, uh, of these collections. So smallest one is, is tuple, then we got list, set and dictionary, uh, set is much larger than, uh, than tuples and the lists. Uh, it's almost uh, four times uh, larger. But uh, the reason behind it is that uh, uh, it's just optimized dictionary in the implementation. So it just have keys and uh, dummy values and is using just just the the keys of the uh, of the dictionary and that's how set is implemented uh, okay next example is uh, using the um, values of the two lists uh, iterating by indexes uh, zip function and using a dictionary. So zip function is the fastest one. Then we got dictionary. And then we got iterating uh, using indexes of two lists. So zip looks like the best option, uh, but uh, 
it's really not so usable uh, in most cases, but dictionary is, is still fine. Next example is uh, checking if element uh, is contained within the list. So first one is just in keyword. Second one is running through all the list and checking if the element is present. Uh, and the last case is a binary search over the list. So we're splitting the list in uh, two equal uh, parts and comparing if uh, the element is present in left or, on, or in the right uh, part of the list, then doing that recursively. Uh, note that uh, list must be sorted before running that operation. So uh, I compare all these uh, checks uh, for two cases. First one is a positive case, so uh, we will find this element in the list, and second one is uh, that we will not find this element in the list. Okay, so first one is uh, in keyword. Uh, so we can see that uh, it runs two times slower if element is not present in the list. So the implementation here is uh, uh, a bit optimized for loop over the elements. Then we can see the for loop over the, over the elements implemented in Python. Uh, it's uh, in positive case, that's 1.6 seconds, and for loop is 2.5 seconds. And it also keeps the, uh, mm, the, the, the trend of a positive to negative ratio. So it's still two times slower. And uh, last one, binary, uh, binary search, it's definitely the fastest one. So in uh, keyword is a Pythonic way to check if element is present, but if we really care about performance and really need to run it fast, binary search is the best option here. Even if the uh, implementation is more complex, but it's still not that scary, right? It's just less than 15 lines. So if we really care about performance, we should uh, use more complex solutions, but which are more efficient. Okay, uh, next one is uh, swapping the uh, variables. Uh, first example shows the swapping using temporary variable. And second one is uh, swapping tuple. So assigning tuple of y x to x y. Okay, so uh, swapping uh, using temporary variable appear to be faster now. Okay, <laughs> that's not what I expected. That might be uh, some uh, some process running in the background which is interrupting that. Yeah, again, but different is not uh, so uh, so big uh, now. Probably if I run it again, <laughs> it will finally give expected results. No, yeah, yeah, it it finally finally gives uh, the smaller uh, value for uh, swapping tuples. So let's see how it's uh, uh, how it looks in this assembled code. We got here it's uh, it's swapping tuples. So we're loading x and uh, y and x then rotating these two, storing, in, uh, storing x and storing y, and then returning known. While here, we got load fast, store fast, load fast, store fast, and again, load fast, store fast. It's uh, three times load and store, 
instead of to store and, and load and store. Uh, next example is uh, efficiency of uh, string construction. First one is uh, f-string uh, uh, introduced in Python 3.6. Uh, next one is formatted string, and the last one is uh, percent, uh, percent formatted string. So f strings is are definitely fastest. Uh, then we see that uh, percent uh, formatted strings are in the middle, and format is longest. Yeah, it's uh, nice to use, but it's slow. Uh, but now in Python 3.6 uh, we got uh, f strings, so let's use it. Okay, so we got nested loop here, and uh, what uh, I will do is iterate over the smaller uh, portion of data in outer uh, loop, then uh, iterate over larger amount of data in outer loop, and then split it equally between outer and uh, inner loop. So. In all these cases, we got the same number of uh, iterations. Okay, so maybe uh, uh, let's <coughs> guess which one will be the fastest. So the first, first example, who thinks that it will be the fastest? Okay, second example. Okay, and the last one. Okay. <laughs> Not everyone uh, plays a bet, but <laughs> okay. Let's run it. Okay. So this one is the fastest one, so second one. So iterating over more items uh, in outer loop which I will expect otherwise, but it's up here, it's not. Uh, yeah, and there is uh, not much difference uh, between uh, uh, the first and the last example. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, see at the uh, disassembled code because it may explain a bit more. So here we're starting first uh, outer loop here we got, we start, we're starting uh, inner loop. Here we're finishing the inner loop. And here we're finishing outer loop. So it's really uh, what we would expect is that iterations over inner loop would be faster, but it appears that the iteration over outer loop is faster. <coughs> Why is that? Because here we're uh, we're jumping uh, to the inner loop, and here we're jumping to outer loop. So if we jump over here frequently, it's a bit slower than jumping over here. Not sure if uh, that's <laughs> if if that explains it, uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty pretty hard to explain on th that disassembled code. Uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, more loops uh, in uh, outer loop is more efficient than, uh, than in the inner loop. OK, next example. Uh, using global variable versus uh, using parameter. 
So again, who thinks that uh, global variable would be more efficient? Okay, uh, who thinks that parameterized uh, variable would be more efficient? Okay, let's see. We're frequently uh, using uh, uh, the uh, global variable, but it's not so efficient as parameterized uh, version. Go, uh, it's, we will see the uh, reason over here in this assembled code. So uh, the only difference here is that uh, in global, uh, global variable is loaded with load global instead of load fast over here. So that's the only difference and it appears twice where, where we load this global variable or, or x parameter of the function. Okay. Next example is slots. Uh, who is familiar with slots? Okay, so I will explain it a bit uh, deeper. So slots uh, are the listed uh, parameter names that uh, object will be restricted to. So if we got slots x over here, we cannot dynamically assign a self dot y, for example. It will just uh, throw the runtime error. We will not be able to do that. OK, so uh, but that sounds like a restriction for us, but what does it mean from, for, from performance point of view? Uh, it's definitely faster with slots. And as we will see in the second, it consumes a much less memory than just the regular object without slots. So we can see that it's three times more uh, memory here used. Uh, the reason behind it is that uh, objects without slots uh, will over allocate the memory uh, so that uh, we, can, we can see it over here. It's three times more. That may, of course, differ uh, based on uh, different, different number of, of uh, slots. If we, for example, give, give here like five five, uh, five uh, variable names or 10, it will differ. Okay, so that would be all from demo part. Let's summarize it shortly. Okay, so first uh, predict what would be the best solution based on your experience, uh, based on the examples you just saw, uh, or just based on your hunch. Uh, predict, but uh, to have preliminary data and don't trust it at all. Always uh, profile your code. Uh, predictions might be misleading. Uh, when I was preparing examples for this demo, I encountered uh, a lot of surprises. Uh, we have also seen, seen one. Uh, I have to rerun this uh, three times because uh, uh, data, data was uh, not perfect enough, I would say. Uh, so things do not, ex do not behave as we expect. Uh, yeah, we should always profile our code, uh, even if uh, you think it's uh, fast enough or fastest, uh, just check it. For your own, uh, for your own peace of mind, right? Uh, and the last thing, uh, calculate return on investment. So try to find the best ratio between uh, possible profit and optimization cost. Uh, there is no point in spending uh, weeks on optimization, which will uh, give you an unnoticeable improvement. Hey, okay, thank you for for your attention. Uh, you can find slides uh, on the left side uh, within the link or QR code. 
Uh, I will also put it uh, in, uh, on the EuroPython website. Uh, I have also pushed uh, the code snippets to GitHub. Uh, link is also available here. Uh, its repository is uh, private for now. I will make it public right after the, the talk. And I also appreciate any feedback about my talk, uh, so I can improve myself uh, to give better talks. Uh, there is a link on the right side uh, to the feedback form. Uh, it's a simple anonymous form. Uh, I would really appreciate if you spend a few seconds uh, to share your opinion. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lucas. So we have time for a couple of questions. I see the hands. Uh, thank, thank you for the talk. Uh, I was wondering, is there any easy way in C profiler to give kind of like a person stats? So there was total time, there was cumulative time. Is there anything where you just give a parameter so that uh, one line or one allocation took, let's say, 80% of the total time, something like that. Just not mm. to calculate the whole uh, thing. Yeah, so that uh, might be not so visible in the uh, examples, uh, but uh, there is a total time of all the calls or total time of uh, or, or time per call for the function. You can also uh, uh, give a, a parameter to C profile to sort the results by specific column. Okay. So we can sort for by total time or uh, time per call. And also one short question. So in terms of that slot, uh, the your example didn't allocate anything to a particular slot. So let's say if you allocate 100 megs or like mm -hmm. read a file um, of the same size with slot and without slot, do you think will make a difference? Yeah, definitely. Uh, because uh, it's, it's always good to profile the specific case because that depends uh, what you're putting in the in this variable. Uh, but in general, uh, object without slot is over allocated. So it will just allocate uh, some, some memory uh, right after the object to have uh, some space to some dynamic uh, assignments. Thank you. Who is? Okay. I've got two questions actually. Uh, the first one is: uh, Are there any graphic tools for the uh, for the profiling libraries you've shown? Yes, there are graphic tools. I didn't list them because I wanted uh, just the simplest tool, which will be most accurate. But there are many tools. You can just uh, Google it, and uh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of them. I, I checked uh, like week or two weeks ago, uh, there were a lot of them. All right, thanks. And the second question is, um, since the profiling you've shown us is not really reli reliable, or not 100% reliable, uh, should we rerun it multiple times to get uh, a better uh, understanding of how the, uh, how the application performs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I run the memory profiler a uh, few times in the loop, for example, uh, it gives it, it stabilizes with, with the time. So first run is uh, like a, a bit inaccurate, but then it, it stabilizes and gives at least the total memory usage uh, on, on the stable level. Then increment also stabilize. stabilize. Like we see, uh, we saw in uh, the example with uh, when I run uh, three times the same function uh, with, with uh, memory profiler, uh, total, total, uh, memory for per, per process has stabilized in the second and, and third uh, line, but uh, uh, increment still did not stabilize. But it will stabilize at, at some point, because it probes the memory uh, by inserting the, uh, the probes in, into the code. Okay, we have to stop here. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. <laughs>